I invite you to join me in a time of imagination as we weave words from the Doctrine and Covenants, sections 163 and 164, through some thoughts I have about our call as community of Christ. Let's hold this space sacred as we explore together what it means to join God, who is already at work in our world on a journey of justice and peace. I hold sacred love for our future, and I live from that place of love as best I can, a space of possibility. It seems almost countercultural in the face of shrinking congregations, aging members, confusion about direction, fear of change. But I know that there is something not yet seen, not even yet dreamed, to which we are called. I know it is there. I am awake to its possibility. I can almost see it. I can almost even touch it. But not yet. Not yet. This dreaming provides me so much hope. We aren't there yet. But friends, have hope. God's future is still unfolding and we can be an active part of it. Our small communities can make a huge difference. From Doctrine and Covenants 163a, you are called to create pathways in the world for peace in Christ to be relationally and culturally incarnate. The hope of Zion is realized when the vision of Christ is embodied in communities of generosity, justice, and peacefulness. Community is a funny thing. At its worst, it is exclusive, individualistic, power-hungry, patriarchal, overbearing, and traumatic. But at its best, it can be inclusive, communal, have shared power, healing, a space for listening, authenticity, and being vulnerable, a place for belonging. In our faith community, our story has always included the idea that Zion is possible here and now. I don't think of it as a place that will all of a sudden spring up before us. It is rather, at least to me, a way of being in community that is always layer by layer unfolding. Each of those layers is a moment in time, an experience, a decision to make a difference, a learning, a connection. Each of those layers is where I believe God's Spirit is leading us next. Layer by layer, we show up. Layer by layer, we respond to the Spirit. Layer by layer emerges justice, compassion, belonging, oneness, community. If we are going to create Zionic community, we are going to have to make a decision to point our hearts and our hands to the building of that community. We are going to have to find our centering in the teachings and love of Jesus Christ. Zionic community comes from being grounded in Christ-based love and the scriptures that point to God's love. Part of my emerging understanding of the importance of community is to listen to others' stories and to be honest with myself when I have participated in the system of power that oppresses, that shuts down, that damages hearts, souls, and bodies. I'm not perfect. We are not perfect. But we are working to learn every day and then paying attention to what is before us be better, act better, and not just better, more equitable, more welcoming, more authentic, more just. Zionic community comes from listening to one another and to voices not represented in our midst. It means participation in reconciliation and healing of the spirit. From Doctrine and Covenants 163, 3b. Above all else, strive to be faithful to Christ's vision of the peaceable kingdom of God on earth. 
courageously challenge cultural, political, and religious trends that are contrary to the reconciling and restoring purposes of God. Pursue peace. The community of peace I am talking about, I am inviting us into, is a community of belonging. You show up just as you are, and I show up too. And we create safe, brave, and sacred space. Space where imagination is allowed to be, where Christ is the center, where the Spirit binds us together and then calls us to make sure that all of the world finds belonging Two, Zionic community is a place of radical invitation and welcome, expressed through learning about one another and listening to each other, especially when we don't quite agree. Part of that community is space for being spiritually formed. There is deep meaning and great possibility in a group of people being willing to covenant to one another and to the earth. This journey of formation can happen in our congregations, our small groups, at our campgrounds, in our youth ministries. It can happen right here and now, honoring what has gone before and what will come. This looks like times of prayer, like moments of spiritual practices with others. It looks like reading circles, focusing on the spiritual journey. It looks like exploration of who God is, and how God calls us into relationship. It looks like deep breathing and knowing that your breath comes from the same place as their breath, that in fact, breath ties us together so completely that it can be confusing when we see people as other. There is no other. They are ours and we are God's beloveds we belong. Zionic community comes from spiritual formation, prayer, spiritual practice, welcome. Part of that community is space for being formed as people of Christ's peace. We respond to one another creating pathways of peace to be formed in us and through us. We recognize that our community can make a difference in the world as we live into our enduring principles, and we respond to the call to live them. President Steve Vesey, in 2005, during his first sermon as president of the church, said this, share, share peace, share the peace of Jesus Christ. That's it. He said the phrase, the peace of Jesus Christ, contains all of the promises, hopes, and blessings of the gospel as revealed by Christ and as affirmed by the Holy Spirit, his promised presence with us. Zionic community comes as we share Christ's peace with others through compassionate ministries of action. Part of that community is valuing diverse contexts and perspectives, asking, am I depending on myself to create the community I want or depending on the direction of God? Is my spirituality tied to my context only? And do I expect others to fit into my way of being? Or is it expansive and inclusive, learning from a diverse way of following God in the world. Zionic community comes from following God into the world, knowing that we don't take God to a waiting world, but we join God where God is already at work. And part of that community requires dreaming. There is great meaning in reflecting on and participating in our foundational ministries the congregations and camping programs that brought us up, that provided a loving community for our children and their children. Dreaming does not negate the past or require us to change all at once. Dreaming doesn't take away 
it adds. It does not come from a place of scarcity where we have to fight to hold on clenched fist as we defend what we think is ours. It comes from a place of abundance where we release that which we hold in a way that ultimately become the end if we don't let it go. Zionic community comes from dreaming, which says there is something being birthed within this community and we are called to be a part of it. Something centered on Christ. From Doctrine and Covenants 164, 9b. When your willingness to live in sacred community as Christ's new creation exceeds your natural fear of spiritual and relational transformation, you will become who you are called to be. The rise of Zion, the beautiful, the peaceful reign of Christ awaits your wholehearted response to the call to make and steadfastly hold to God's covenant of peace in Jesus Christ. Our community has always lived in a space of questions. Rather than see that as a place of lack of faith, I see questions as healthy, as necessary, as change-making. They leave space for creativity. For example, do we make safe space for all? in our congregations and communities? Do we look honestly at who we are as we look to who we are called to be? Are we stewards of all our resources? Are we willing to be in relationship with people in our communities, a relationship that will change us as we encounter them? Do we see ourselves birthing the next part of our Christ-centered response rather than being locked into that which is falling away? Are we willing to let go of what we need to let go so we can embrace that which God is calling us to embrace? Are we grieving what we expected while moving into the unexpected? Can we ask important questions without being afraid that we are losing our past, our history, our sense of who we are? Friends, our future as a people of God depends on us paying attention to the spirit that is shifting our hearts in response to our calling to be Christ's peacemakers in the world. Do not think that we haven't already been moving towards our future we do every day. Do not think that you are alone if you are grieving, stubbornly holding on to what you know so well, asking not to be left behind. Do not think that you are alone if you are running towards the future and frustrated on the timing of the response of our community. If you are dreaming and wondering if anyone is dreaming with you, you are not alone. In every community, there is a variety of responses to change. And we are changing. This very important community question says so in its very asking, God, where will your spirit lead us next? The question is, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus Christ as we follow God's spirit into what is next. I can't answer that for you, but I can say this. For me, I will continue to be a dreamer. I will continue to stubbornly imagine a future of hope. I will also walk with you into that space of hope. I will remind you that you are enough and that I love you. I will listen as we go. I will sing the old songs with you, the great and marvelous are thy works songs, the spirit of the living God songs, and I will sing new songs too. Some Lizzo and some Jacks. I invite you to be a part of this great imagining. 
from Doctrine and Covenants, section 164, 9a. Beloved children of the Restoration, your continuing faith adventure with God has been divinely led, eventful, challenging, and sometimes surprising to you. By the grace of God, you are poised to fulfill God's ultimate vision for the church. Friends, we are poised to join with God who calls us to fulfill God's ultimate vision for the world. May we find time and space and belonging that allows us to live our lives of faith in sacred community. From Doctrine and Covenants 164.9f, the mission of Jesus Christ is what matters most for the journey ahead. Share the peace of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. Amen.